Hello, hello, welcome to another video with me. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new here, welcome back. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about how dark aesthetics tend to always come back to these certain inspirations that I mention, so many other people mention. And I always get asked, if I want to start dressing in a dark way, in a spooky way, in an alternative way, how do I go about that? And my theory is if you try to aim to dress as these certain entities, concepts, creatures, characters, I feel like you will achieve a dark aesthetic even without trying. And that is dressing for a dark aesthetic like a vampire, a witch, a siren, a haunted doll, which can be interchangeable with anything ghostly and a fairy, but more specifically, a dark fairy. Now, as we explore these concepts, keep in mind that this is not gonna be a history lesson. Every single entity that I am going to be discussing has a long and in-depth history that you can definitely go into. They touch upon several different cultures. I am mainly going to be discussing how to achieve this feeling and using this idea of them as a muse. But keep in mind, some of them are attached to certain cultures and beliefs, so please be respectful of that. This is not just an aesthetic. For some, like for example, I am a magic practitioner in many different ways, but dressing as a witch does touch upon different cultures and beliefs, so just please be respectful of that. However, dressing witchy or being inspired by things that are magical is okay. Just do your research and do your history, um, but I will touch more upon that. Again, we are just going to be touching upon being inspired by the idea of them, where they are in folklore and in famous mainstream media. Before I dive into dressing like a vampire or a siren, I noticed that there was something that all of these concepts and entities touch upon and why does it why does it feel like when you dress like a dark fairy or a dress like a siren why does it have this natural feeling of a dark aesthetic so my theory is they touch upon three things that i feel like contribute to a dark look and that is being inspired by the night things that are dark nature nature is a huge component of this and things that are of the supernatural or things that are not of this realm. Now, if you were to dress purely for supernatural, uh, this touches upon my last video talking about dark ethereal energy and aesthetics, and that is uh, partially embracing the unsettling, things that you can't quite describe. There are some things that are definitely of a dark aesthetic, but make people, most people uncomfortable. But if you like that thing, embrace it and that can contribute to your dark aesthetic. So for example, I have a coffin purse that I love from Backstitch Bruja. I love it with all my heart. I feel so empowered when I wear it, but there are some people that are uncomfortable with my coffin bag. In many ways, like you have to respect other people's beliefs and boundaries, they have to do the same for yours. So if that coffin bag is meaningful to you, it's nothing harming anybody, then take pride in that. So that's part of embracing the unsettling. Other things that contribute to supernatural aesthetics is layers where it's more than meets the eye. So that touches upon the ghostly effect, the being inspired by things of another realm. One being inspired purely by nature, what this makes me think of is mushrooms, rituals, spiritual trinkets, metals, and gems. These are all things that have a natural feel to them. They take inspiration from the earth and things of this world. And where nature and supernatural intertwine are things that are like cryptic and cryptids, urban legends. And being inspired by those things can definitely have a spooky feel to them. And this is how I concluded the five concepts that I want to deep dive into. When dressing purely based off of nature, things of this world, earthy things, fairy. But fairy can also, you can lean more towards the supernatural side of that, you can lean more towards the night side of that, but dressing purely based off of fairy, definitely feels more of a natural thing. Where nature and night meet, kind of like that celestial feel, um, being inspired by the moon, bats, etc. That's where I came to conclusion that dressing in a witchy way or dressing of the occult is a great inspiration to dress 
in a dark aesthetic where night and supernatural meet. That's where I feel like dressing like a vampire comes in and dressing purely supernatural gives the effect of a haunted doll. And the reason why I want to talk about haunted doll over any other ghostly elements is because when it comes to dressing as a haunted doll or a possessed doll or a porcelain doll, there is that level of unsettlingness. It's cute, but creepy. And that is an aesthetic that we cannot deny is part of the dark aesthetic culture. And where nature and supernatural come in is very much like a siren. So the first concept I want to talk about in order to dress in a dark aesthetic, I think dressing towards a vampire look, a vampiric look, is a great way to go about that. Some ways to determine if the look of a vampire is for you is if you are a fan of the classics such as gothic literature, of Dracula or even the movie Bram Stoker's Dracula. I think that is an amazing fashion movie. I think another great muse is Akasha from Queen of the Dam. When it comes to this idea of a vampiric look, the immediate thing we think of is the Victorian era. But we also have to keep in mind that there are so many other aesthetics that you can go for that still have a vampiric feel. And Resident Evil, specifically this vampire, her three daughters. So like I mentioned, the Victorian era is one of the most obvious looks that you think of. And like I said, this is not gonna be a full history of where do vampires come from? Where did we first hear about them? That is actually kind of a muddy history and there is several different resources of where that comes from. So whenever people dress inspired by that time period, a lot of people think of vampires and they think you're actually kind of going for a vampiric look. And some ways to go about that too, to further deepen that look and aesthetic is looking into all shades of red. I feel like when it comes to a vampiric aesthetic, you are not chained to just black clothing, black lace, you can, but even just wearing an all red dress still has that vampiric look. Wearing a shine high gloss red lipstick can still have that vampiric look. I feel like what differs vampire from the other aesthetics I'll be talking about is the brocades, the velvet. It is a very maximalist look. It's very naturally sensual. And that's where Akasha comes in. Akasha is, yes, she has more gold in her aesthetic. She is a slightly more modern iteration of a vampire look, but she still has this level of luxurious and natural sensuality. It is definitely one of the most dramatic of the styles and aesthetics. And I think embracing a vampiric look is embracing opulence and luxury. Out of all of the aesthetics, the silhouettes are going to feel long and voluminous and very full, whether it's in the coats, in the sleeves, in the dress. So like I mentioned, Bram Stoker's Dracula, the movie, is a great inspiration for this. Of course, you can look into actual Victorian era dresses or Victorian inspired runway looks, but this movie is just such a beautiful visualization of what it could mean to dress as a vampire of opulence. Whenever you think about vampires and vampiric culture, they have been around for years. And if you think of a vampire who exudes that energy, they have collected a lot of wealth. It makes the most sense. And I don't wanna deep dive too much into Twilight just because their looks are a lot more on the minimal side, but they do express wealth in a different way. I guess quiet luxury if you want to call it that, but the vampiric aesthetic that I am emphasizing today is of opulence and of extravagance. The next main source of inspiration I wanna talk about in dressing for a dark aesthetic is dressing like a witch, dressing witchy, dressing magical or of the occult. Now, when stepping into this realm, it is still okay to find them, like them as in of magic, of witches, to be a source of inspiration for style, but still be respectful because some of these aesthetics and looks can step into the realm of these are people's practices, these are people's beliefs, and there are deities that come into play, so just please be mindful and respectful. But some great muse inspirations in mainstream media is 
Sabrina. So of course you have the Whimsa Goth aesthetic of the 90s teenage Sabrina. I still love her looks for a lot of casual days, but of course the chilling adventures of Sabrina. I know it's a debate of whether it's a good show or not because of how cheesy it was in some ways, but I think if you look at it as entertainment. There are some amazing costume designs in there. My favorite character is Prudence. I have mentioned her in my Dark Essence video, so there's that. The Craft is another great whimsic goth slash modern day iteration of dressing as a witch. Stevie Nicks is a classic muse, and The Love Witch is a great iteration if you don't if you want to have a little more of a lighthearted take on it. So when it comes to dressing witchy or of the occult, keep in mind that some of the motifs that are involved in things that feel witchy is a tribute to deities and to nature. Now, if this is something that you are actually interested in, please do your research, but just please keep that in mind. I think dressing witchy though, what it means is of course taking inspiration from nature. I mentioned that in my little Venn diagram, but that also means dressing in natural fibers. A lot of clothing and silhouettes that are very flowy tend to be of linen, 100% cotton, or they just, they look like a pure dark cottagecore dream. Some obvious silhouettes that if you want to push that witchy aesthetic that I've noticed I even wore and people are like, ooh, you're giving a very celestial magic vibe today is when I wear trumpet sleeves, sleeves that go down. You definitely see that in Stevie Nicks and I think that also contributes to her witchy magical aesthetic. Trumpet sleeves, I think also bishop sleeves that can also be vampiric looking, but can also still feel of the occult. Um, in terms of color, the black, black is obvious, but stepping into burgundies and plums are these dark hues that you still see in nature. And the silhouettes that remind me of this look is very long, weightless layers, and there is some level of flow. Dressing witchy is actually pretty much a broad term. But the thing is, when aiming for a dark aesthetic and you have this in mind of, I want to look like a witch, when you keep that in mind and that is your goal, you will get there and that will give off a dark aesthetic. The next source of inspiration I want to talk about is dressing as a dark aesthetic siren. Now I did debate if I was going to include mermaid or, or siren and we don't need to get into the whole debate of if a siren is the bird-like creature or if it's more like what we see as a, a mermaid. The reason why I decided to go with siren is because I'm thinking of deep sea. I'm also thinking of the term siren and what it has become. Siren, yes, I, I'm well aware of the history of what sirens are meant to look like, but if you think about it in modern day terms, whenever there are makeup looks, they think of siren eyes. They think of like this very seductive look. And you can take inspiration from things that are traditionally mermaid inspired, but I'm just using the term siren for this dark aesthetic video. So some of the terms that it reminds me of is iridescence. Out of all of the dark aesthetics, I feel like this is the one where it's dark, but there's a bit of like blue, flecks of shimmer. Some elements and motifs to look into that give off that dark siren look is pearls. Um, not just like the perfect circular pearls, but ones that feel baroque. They're very natural, imperfect. Water-like satin is a key fabric, so I'm thinking like long slips, lingerie-esque type of clothing. But unlike vampiric and witchy aesthetics, where it feels opulent, it's layered. When it comes to a siren aesthetic, it is a lot more minimal. And even when you have layers of pearls, different things going on, it still feels um, a lot more minimal in comparison. And that is the beauty of a siren dark aesthetic. It still gives off this dark and eerie feeling but you don't need much to express that. It is embracing the simplicity, but still dark. I feel like when it comes to makeup or any hues in general, it tends to be a lot more cool tone to mimic the deep oceanic feel. Makeup can be gray or black gloss. Of course, you can go for just like a straight black lipstick, but if you really wanna go for that water themed 
I think gray or black gloss will express that. I feel like when it comes to a dark siren aesthetic, it's gonna be a lot more colorful in ways, but a little more glimmer and shimmer. And I feel like the fabric, of course, is gonna have a bit of that, like you just walked out of the water type of feel. So that's where I think satins or iridescent fabric can come in and really give off that look. I feel like the Siren Dark Aesthetic is a little more undone. It's a little effortless and a little messy, but in a good way. And I think it definitely veers towards the supernatural nature part, like I mentioned. So of course, embracing that settle, unsettling feel. I feel like if you really want to dive into this, definitely check out my last video I did last week talking about dark ethereals. I think there are so many different inspirations I used for that video that is very relevant to a dark siren look. So dressing like a haunted doll, and the reason why I wanted to delve into this one more versus the ghostly aesthetic, I feel like the ghostly aesthetic can still be achieved if you go for a witchy occult look or even a siren look, but haunted doll is very specific. It's very much, it's roughly, it's ribbon-like, it's kind of dressing like a dessert. It's a little bit of uncanny valley and embracing that. When dressing like a haunted doll, a porcelain doll, whatever you want to call it, it's embracing this aesthetic of I am cute, but I'm also creepy. Dressing like a haunted doll in terms of makeup is doll-like makeup, put doll-like eyes, so you can, there's so many different makeup tutorials to look into that. I think a main one though is milky gloss though. That's something that, so the eyes, I feel like you can experiment with. There's so many um, Japanese, Korean, Chinese makeup that really emphasize this doll-like look in terms of the eyes. But I think a key element is that milky gloss because it truly mimics the look of a doll. And like I mentioned, it's a little uncanny, uncanny valley, not exactly like that trending uncanny valley makeup look but there is something about dressing like a doll that is a bit of that and it is ghostly at the end of the day so like layering up on this something where you feel like you're kind of floating in it so these fabrics are soft they are doll-like they are short and voluminous layers there are so many aesthetics that already touch upon this haunted doll look granted they are not always aimed for that but i think dressing towards this as your goal is a great way to achieve that cute but creepy look. It's very roughly, very playful, it's kind of mischievous, and some Lolita styles um, of Japanese fashion subculture obviously touch upon a haunted doll look, but just please keep in mind that there is a culture that comes with Lolita fashion, so please do your research before you dive into it. But you don't have to dress or be part of the Lolita culture to dress like a haunted doll. That is of your own. And there are so many lacy garments, um, petticoats, voluminous pieces that you can wear that give off this aesthetic. It is playing around with ribbons and bows in a dark way. There is also the style of dark nymphette, but just my personal thing, I don't really like calling it that just because it reminds me of the book Lolita and that makes me uncomfortable. Please keep in mind dressing like a haunted doll does not have to be like that. The obvious inspiration that you should take inspiration from are actual dolls. Look at Victorian dolls, look at Japanese dolls, look at dolls of different cultures and how they are decorated, how they are dressed, and taking inspiration from that because they are a work of art. In many ways, dressing in this specific dark aesthetic is almost like partaking in a work of art. So last but not least, the aesthetic I want to talk about is dressing like a dark fairy. Now, again, when stepping into this one, um, please keep in mind fairies, the fae, have a very important um, prevalence in different cultures, so just please be mindful of that. But what I mean dressing like a dark fairy is truly, truly being one with nature and taking elements from that, but in a dark way. So this is floral and butterfly accessories, or of the night, so you could do moth accessories. You can do instead of just like a floral crown, floral um, embellishments in your hair or on your clothes, maybe take inspiration from florals that are of the poisonous realm, 
Lily of the Valley, super beautiful flower, super poisonous. Like the Siren aesthetic, this is going to be shimmery, um, sheer layers. I feel like though, when it comes to the Siren shimmer and glimmer, it's a little more pearlescent and a little more blue and cool toned. Dark Fairy can be a little more colorful. I feel like if you're going for glimmer and shimmer, if you're going for more colorful with a dark aesthetic, it'll feel more fairy. If you're going more blues and purples, it'll feel more oceanic and siren-like. They're a little devious, a little playful, and I feel like that can be expressed in your clothing as well. Being experimental, cut off pieces, um, cropped pieces, uh, ripped up layers, it's short and abrupt lines that make it feel more fairy than witchy. When you do short, abrupt lines in the layers, whether it's in the skirt or things that feel a little patchy, that's where it'll be more of a dark fairy look. And it is going to be experimental, especially with the makeup. I feel like when it comes to fairy-esque type of makeup looks, there's there tends to be a lot more experimentation with the lines of the eyeliner or the makeup and it can be a lot more colorful and you can bring it back in by making it darker whether it's truly just dressing in black or like wearing tights with holes in it, it kind of has a dark fairy look i feel like fk twigs is a great inspiration for this i feel like when it comes to dark fairy looks it's also getting in tuned with the dark ethereal essence and FK Twigs has Ethereal Essence as one of her prominent um, face essences. Even also tapping into of a fantasy novel is a great way to tap into this dark fairy aesthetic. So I know I only touched upon five entities, five concepts in terms of dark aesthetics that like these are your pie in the sky muses. Of course, there are others that I didn't talk about, but I feel like they can still fit into this realm. So like anything ghostly can still be of a haunted doll or anything ghostly can still be of a witch look. Things that feel very elven, elf-like can be of a dark fairy look. Looks that feel almost like demon inspired can also fall into the vampire look. There are so many ways to go about that, but this was just my theory of if you want to dress in a dark aesthetic, aiming towards dressing like a vampire, you are definitely going to achieve a dark aesthetic some way, somehow. If you are aiming towards to look like a creepy porcelain doll, you are achieving a dark aesthetic. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed making these mood boards. And I now have a Patreon. So if you liked any of the graphics and mood boards that I made, if you are a dollar tier patron, um, all of these I'm going to compile into a PDF so you will have access to it. And if you are the $5 uh, patron, Patreon tier, I will be including a shopping guide, my monthly favorites uh, before the end of this month. And then I also do have a $20 tier where I will give you access to messaging me via Discord and I will be essentially your on the call fashion friend. As of right now, I'm limiting it to like three questions, three topics a month. However, if I do have time and you have a lot of fashion questions and advice that you need, I will be there. Um, but I have been asked so many times if I do one-on-one -on -one consultations just because the style guides I do on my own, you give me the information and I create the style guides. There are some people who want like, like full contact with me because they have like questions on the go or if they're shopping at a store and they want advice then and there. So that's what the $20 a month tier is. Um, but more information on that on my website, which will be linked in bio, or if you just go to patreon.com slash Sokimochi, that will be there. Um, but thank you so much. Um, if you celebrate the holidays, I hope you have a great time with your loved ones or just have a safe holiday in general. Stay safe and I hope you have a great week. And until next time, bye.